Today, I look at the calculations of the two lines that define the Ichimoku cloud and discuss what they tell us in terms of medium and long-term support and resistance. Stay tuned. DarwinX is a UK FCA regulated broker and asset manager on a mission to disrupt the financial trading, investing and asset management industries. As a trader, you'll benefit from cost-effective market access via multiple trading platforms and APIs. These enable trading and investing in any US stock, over 60 of the most liquid futures contracts, FX and CFDs. You can even diversify your portfolio by buying and selling other traders' strategies as investable assets themselves. So, if all of that sounds interesting, Learn more by clicking on the link top right now or find further links in the description right below. Now back to today's tutorial. I always feel that understanding the calculation of an indicator helps you then utilise that indicator to greater effect. We've already done this for other components of Ichimoku earlier in the series. So let's now put the last piece of the jigsaw into place and look at the calculations for the Ichimoku cloud. So the series in question is what I called Spotlight on Indicators. And so far, while we've been looking at Ichimoku, we've covered the Chiku span and the calculation behind that. Likewise for the Tenkan Sen and the Kijun Sen. And we're focusing our attention now on the Ichimoku cloud and the two lines that define it. So if you remember, we have what's called the Senku Span A and the Senku Span B. Now A is a faster line than B and so it chases price more closely, whereas Senku Span B tends to lag price for longer. But it's the area between these two lines that's called the cloud or the Kumo. So firstly, let's take a closer look at Senku Span A. This is sometimes called leading span A because of the fact that it's plotted 26 periods ahead of price action. And the idea behind this line is that it provides a medium term indication of support and resistance. And we'll see how that's different from Senku span B in a moment. But just like for the other lines of Ichimoku, the calculation here is also very simple, and it's just the average of the Kijun Sen and the Tenkan Sen lines, but then of course plotted 26 periods ahead. So let's take a quick look at a visualization of this. So here we have the Senku Span A, which at the moment, because the price action is in an uptrend, the Senku Span A is providing the upper range of the cloud. Of course, if we were in a downtrend, then the span A line would be chasing that price more quickly and would form the bottom of the range of the cloud. So in terms of the calculation of this line, we firstly need the Tenkan Sen and also the Kijun Sen. And let's just take a look at the very latest point. So here we need to take the value of the Tenkan Sen, represented by the red spot here. Likewise for the Kijun Sen, which is this. And remember the calculation requires the average of these, which will be this point here. We then take that and plot it 26 bars into the future. And one way that I tend to visualize the meaning of this is that it provides memory of previous price action. So when the price action eventually reaches the right hand side of the chart as we see it at the moment, this point that we've just calculated provides a value to compare the current price action at that time with, broadly speaking, where the price action was 26 bars ago. And the reason this provides us with a medium term indication of support and resistance levels is because it's based on the Tenkan Sen and Kijun Sen, which tend to follow the price very closely certainly in comparison to the other lines that we see in Ichimoku. So let's now compare that to the Senku Span B line. Again, sometimes termed the leading Span B. And here, this gives a much longer term view of support and resistance levels. Why? Because now it's calculated as the average of the highest high 
and the lowest low over 52 periods of price action. But in exactly the same way, it gets plotted 26 periods ahead of that most recent price action. So again, let's look at a visualization of this. So here's the Senku Span B at the moment providing the lower range of the cloud. And in terms of the calculation, we need to define the last 52 periods of price data. And it's simply then a case of taking the highest high, which we see here, the lowest low, which we see here, finding the average price between those two, which is this line. And then we plot that 26 periods ahead, giving us the bottom range of the cloud here. Now, what you will recognize about all of the components of the Ichimoku indicator is that every line is calculated using a very simple technique or calculation. There's nothing mystical about any of these, and it's a highly understandable indicator, even though many people tend to get relatively phased by it because it does have so many lines. But as I've said in the past, as soon as we know what each of those lines is telling us, what the specific role of each of those lines is, then actually interpretation of Ichimoku is a relatively simple exercise. And indeed, in a couple of episodes time, I'll be looking at a selection of different trading strategies that use Ichimoku and starting to put all of those rules together. But for now, let's stick with the cloud. And I'm just going to give you one very simple illustration of where in this particular price action, the cloud does provide support. Now, remember, when price action is above the cloud, then the cloud will be providing support. When price action is below the cloud, then the cloud will then switch and start to provide indications of resistance. At the moment, it's above. And you can see the closest that the price action gets to the cloud is this point right here. And it almost touches it, but not quite. But on this instance, as soon as the price action reaches that point, the price appears to bounce off that. And the Senku Span A has effectively provided us with a level of support for that price. Now, in the next episode, I'm going to go into a lot more detail around the different aspects of the cloud and how we can interpret that to then start informing a trading strategy. But it's at episode nine that things start to get really interesting because I'll be focusing my time on actual Ichimoku trading strategies, putting all the pieces of the jigsaw puzzle together to provide a holistic strategy with filters, signals, and triggers. And although Ichimoku is often cited as an all-in-one indicator, i.e. you don't really need any other indicators in conjunction with it, there are many ways of interpreting the signals. And so it doesn't just provide a single trading strategy. The information it provides and gives out can be interpreted in a number of ways, producing multiple trading strategies. And I'll be covering some of the more popular strategies, looking at the concepts behind those. But then remember, after I've covered them and covered the principles behind them, I'll then be testing them out as well. And all of those results, of course, I will share with you. So we'll hopefully be getting a feel of how well does Ichimoku actually stack up as an indicator. Now, if you're not already subscribed to the Darwin X channel, then click the subscribe button. And if you request alerts, then you'll get notified when any of those new episodes get released. But that's all we've got time for this episode. Until next time, trade safe.